As you can see, with the smile on my face, this was a phenomenal episode of Dragon Ball Super. Like, bro, this this got me hyped. Like, I was legit hyped. When I was watching this episode and it continued to go down, and you saw Ani Raza or whatever, I think that's how you pronounce his name, he was going in, he was showcasing his strength, and then everybody, everybody from Universe 7 had to go up against this man. I'm like, yo, 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 yo. But what really got me, though, okay, was when this man, okay, the enemy of Universe 3, or Universe 3, what he was doing, he did a Janimba move. Th this man started punching through, like, warps. He warped his punches. I'm like, is this Janimba? Like, is this man doing a Janimba move? Because I want to just let you guys know something, okay? Janimba is one of my favorite, favorite movie villains. Easily. One of my favorites. E easily. Because I love Janimba's style. I love that movie when Goku and Vegeta had to work together and they became Gogeta. I, I love that movie. I love Janimba's fighting style. It's just something I always loved. And I always have loved, you know, v Janimba, playing with Janimba in, you know, Dragon Ball games. And when I saw that move in this episode of Dragon Ball Super, he's warping his punches. He's hitting Goku. He's hitting Gohan. He's hitting Vegeta. I'm like, yo, yo. I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't have, like, a callback to that movie with, you know, maybe the warp fist coming through and like Vegeta probably shooting through the war pole back at you know Aniraza. I was hoping something like that would happen but even though it didn't I was really shocked to see that. I was like, yo, I see you, Toei. I see what you're doing there. I see you. You, you you're doing that call back to Janimba. You can do Broly, so now you're doing Janimba. I'm fine with that. I I, I think many can agree we should be fine with that. That was really cool, really epic. Love the style of it. So anyways though Everybody from Universe 7 had to team up to face off against the final opponent, Universe 3, before they get into the final round, which is Universe 11, the rematch and all that. So, Aniraza is no joke. The, the man legit was strong. Like, he was a really strong opponent. You even had Frieza. This man, Frieza, had to come in and start helping because it got that crazy. That made me happy because, as I've already told you guys many times before, I'm a Frieza fanboy. I like Frieza quite a bit. And seeing Frieza come in and all that, and like what he said to Aniraza, that made me laugh so hard. He's like, are you attacking me because you think I am weak? I'm like, yo, Frieza getting angry. Like, this man attacking and thinking that Frieza's weak or whatever, can't do much. I'm like, that man, he's about to feel the fury of God in his soul because Frieza is no joke. We know this. Frieza's pretty strong. And I thought that was very funny how he was very snarky about that. But another thing I liked was that Frieza kicked Goku. Like, Frieza saved Goku. Can we just take a moment to process that? Frieza saved Goku. Not once, but twice now. He's actually saved Goku crazy but anyways Frieza kicks Goku back into the ring and he's like oops my bad my leg slipped I'm like okay Frieza okay Frieza I like it I like it I mean it's been a big thing going on between Goku and Frieza recently so seeing that I'm like I'm fine with this I, I, I'm fine I want more Frieza and seeing Frieza just straight up being like snarky and all that towards Goku and then Goku being right back at him he's like oh that was just like a tickle it didn't even feel bad at all I'm like of course of course of course I love their dynamic I love Goku and Frieza's, you know, combos they have. It's just so interesting because they're they're enemies. They both don't trust each other at all. You know for a fact that there's someone that Goku definitely does not trust, it is Frieza. But he understands Frieza quite a bit, and so does Frieza. Frieza understands Goku. They both know each other's weaknesses, and I just love how their conversations usually go, especially since Frieza came back into the series. But getting back on topic, though, okay? So, Aniraza, this man, straight up strong. Like, I... I have to say, I was really impressed with the power and the fret level of him, and I was like, yo, this is a really cool, like, finale before we get into the really, really important stuff, the final match between Universe, you know, 7 versus 11, and I'm like, okay, th this man is no joke, he's very strong, I mean, everybody is having to team up and go in, I'm like, that's crazy, I mean, 18 was also eliminated in this episode, which I was like, bro, like, Okay, I mean, it made sense that some had to be eliminated because, I mean, we're getting into the final matchup and it would basically be like a 3v6 if 18 was eliminated. So seeing, you know, 18 eliminated, now it's eliminated to 5v3. And I'm going to assume before everything is said and done, two others are going to get eliminated before we have, like, you know, the 1v1v1v1 and stuff. You know, each individual having their own single opponent to fight. And if I had to assume anything, looking at who is left, 
I, it's obvious that 17 is going to get eliminated. I mean, when you look at the episode, he's very tired out. It looked like he did his purpose. I mean, he took down Andy Raza. He, I mean, he took him down. He managed to break his, like, energy conductor or whatever. And he managed to actually kind of win that fight. So, 17 kind of did his job. He did a very good job there. And I feel like he's probably the next one to get knocked out. Now, if I had to kind of look at any of the characters to get knocked out, we have Goku, we have Frieza, we have, you know, Gohan, and we have Vegeta. And judging by the next episode preview... I'm just going to take a guess here, and I, I don't want it to happen, but it most likely is going to happen. Vegeta most likely is going to job to, you know, Jordan. I, I can already see it, because Vegeta's going up against Jordan and all that, and I'm assuming Goku needs some time to kind of rest or whatever. That's what I'm assuming, judging by the preview for next episode. And so I feel like Vegeta's probably going to uh, tap into maybe Ultra Instinct. He might unlock it, but then he's going to get destroyed. And in turn, Vegeta's going to job, get, you know, wrecked. And then it's going to leave Frieza, Gohan, and Goku. And then I want to assume the next one to probably get eliminated if Toei wants to go the obvious route. They're probably going to eliminate Frieza because Goku and Gohan, father and son, working together. That makes a lot of sense. However, if they want to do the unexpected route, they would eliminate Gohan and then leave Frieza and Goku, which would be fantastic. I've said this many times already throughout reviewing this arc. I would love to see Frieza as the last one standing. But uh, anyways, though, it, it, just through the process of elimination, I'm going to assume it's going to be 17 eliminated next, Vegeta next, and then it's probably going to be Frieza. That, that's probably what's going to happen. And then it's going to be Gohan, and then it's going to be Goku to stand up and be the last one standing. But even then, though, regardless of those predictions of what might happen, though, this episode was pure and 100% epic and fire. Like, is this was a... Uh, this was a good episode. Like, this is the reason why I like anime. This is the reason why I like Dragon Ball. This is the reason why I grew up with this show. Just stuff like this. Like, that entire key wave blast when all five of them were firing their key blast at, you know, Aniraz's, like, death ball basically coming in. I'm like, that is so epic. I even posted it on Twitter because it got me so hyped. Like, I had to pause the video. I'm not even joking. I paused the video and I took a picture. I'm like, I posted this on Twitter. I'm like, this is epic as hell. Hell, like, oh my god, because it was just so cool just seeing all of them having this key blast together just to hold this man back. And it's crazy that the man was actually pushing them back in some way, so it just shows he was no joke in terms of power level. But anyways, though, can we just talk about what Seventeen did in that moment? He... charged straight through that death ball and attacked that man. That was... whoa. The, just the android barrier, okay, that Android Seventeen has... That's powerful. I mean, it's always been kind of strong in, like, the games to what we have seen, like, a little bit from Cell and all that. But seeing it used in Dragon Ball Super, I'm like, yeah, that, that basically summarizes how the androids were in the games and all that, how strong that shield was. And seeing Seventeen charge through it with his shield on, and when he breaks out and then punches the man right in the forehead, I'm like... I like 17. <laughs> I really like 17. Like, I really like this man. Like, that man, I'm so glad he came back in this series because I always was upset that he never really had more of a role to play, even though he was wished back. And I'm just glad that Toei did bring him back, even though we, it's obvious it's fan service. I mean, it's very obvious. I mean, the entirety of Dragon Ball Super is basically fan service. But, I mean, having 17 back is fan service and Frieza being back is fan service. But even then, though, I'm just glad to have him back and I'm glad to see him being relevant, helping out, and just seeing 17 take down a very tough opponent and so yeah very cool stuff overall now um besides that though let's talk about the combat capabilities of Aniraza so he was able to sense everybody around him for instance he was able to use his ears or whatever to like like a bat sonar to sense everybody and then counteract and attack them instantly and he managed to knock all five of everybody back in an instant like like that, just knocked them all back, which shows that the man had tremendous speed, which makes sense since he had a bunch of uh, people combined into his body. He was also a robot, so he could probably have absurd calculations and figure out where people are at. So him, you know, combating and fighting all five of them at once, pretty impressive, but at the same time, it was to be expected. Now, let's talk about that Android 18 scene, though, okay? So the man determined that Basically, since he can't really knock anyone out and all that, since everybody would keep saving each other, he determined that it would be best to basically just devour them, which that made me kind of question a couple of things. So, Eddie also decided he wanted to eat 18, basically, just consume her to get rid of her out of the battle. But I was wondering, wait a minute, if he did that, would that necessarily mean he just killed her? Because when I think of something like what he was trying to do, that it makes me assume he was trying to kill her. And I'm like, if he did that, he would be eliminated, because we do know killing is not allowed in this tournament. So... That's what I'm kind of curious about. I'm very curious about that, exactly what would have happened. Would he have fused with 18? Now, that would have been scary when I think about it. If he could actually do that with 18, 
oh, oh my, well, like, yo, his power level would have jumped even higher, and if he would have got 17 as well, we would have had, like, a perfect sell situation, so... I'm curious what would have happened. I guess we'll never know, but I do wonder what would have happened. I mean, would it have been a, like a fusion? Would he have gotten a lot stronger? Just very curious. Now, speaking of design-wise, I'm very impressed with the design of Eddie Raza. I I'm very impressed with him. And hopefully I'm not the only one to think this, but his design reminds me a lot of the final boss from uh, the plan to eradicate all the Saiyans. It was from the uh, Dragon Ball Z game that came out a long time ago. I, for I forget the name of the game, but there was an OVA that released with the game, and it was called uh, The Plan to Eradicate All the Saiyans. I think that's the name. If I got the name wrong, please forgive me. I've only watched it, like, once. I've never actually watched it a lot, sadly. But, uh... It was a good OVA, by the way. But, um, the design of the character of Eddie Raza, he looked exactly like that. And I don't know if it's because of just decision and an art style choice, but I, I noticed his design looked like that, and hopefully I'm not the only one to notice it. But overall, though, I still like it. Really cool design, and I, I feel like, you know, Universe 3 is definitely a cool universe. I, I really liked Universe 3. I didn't think I would like them, honestly. I figured I would not like them at all because, I mean... They just were stereotypical robots. I just, I didn't think I'd like them. I, I didn't. But at the end of the day, once they finally are eliminated, I'm like, man, that was a really cool universe. I mean, they had their own little quirks and gags about them, but that was a really cool universe. And I mean, it was kind of be, to be expected when you think about it, because when it comes to robots or androids, cyborgs in Dragon Ball, usually they're incredibly OP. I mean, think about it. I mean, it's been an ongoing thing throughout Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and then now Super. I mean, you have in Dragon Ball, we have the Red Ribbon Army, and then in Dragon Ball Z, we have Perfect Cell and stuff, the androids. And but now in this, we have this going on. So robots have kind of always been a little bit strong when it comes to Dragon Ball. So seeing any Raza like that makes sense. It's just like, yo, I didn't think I liked them that much. But I really do after watching this episode. So yeah, with all that out of the way, though, we're finally getting into the main fight. Universe 7 versus Universe 11. Now, I would really love it if Toei threw a curveball. If they threw a curveball in Universe 11 one, I would love that. I, I would really love that. That's something I personally want. Like, there there's two things I personally want, okay? Number one, I want Universe 11 to win, okay? I want them to win, destroy Universe 7, just beat them all and all that, just to show that they're still on a way higher level than what Goku is right now, and when they still wish them all back. That, that would be very cool if they did that. However, if Universe 11 does lose, I would like to see Frieza be the one to win it. I, I would love to see Frieza to be the one to win it, get the wish and all that, wish for either to become the god of all, or take down the gods, or, you know, wish for immortality or something, go back to his original OG wish. I, I would love to see something like that, if that did happen. And that, those are the two things I would really love to happen. I highly doubt Toei's willing to go down that path. I just doubt it, because Goku, at the end of the day, always needs to win. But I would love it if they try to do something different with this tournament. It'd just be very cool, and it'd be a great setup for future arcs. I mean, just think about it like this, okay? Let's just say Universe 11 wins, okay? You know, Dren just beats Goku and everybody else, and all that. they get destroyed. And then, you know, they're wished back. That will give Goku the initiative that he still needs to get stronger. He is nowhere near them at all, like, you know, Universe 11, and that would mean he's nowhere even near, like, the gods of destruction. He has a lot of, you know, time to work on this and get better and stronger, but also this would set up for Frieza as well. But then, let's think about this. If Frieza won and came on top, this would make Frieza a stronger person, a stronger villain, because at the end of the day, we all know Frieza he's probably not going to become a good guy. So he's being set up for a long-term plot. He's being set up for something very heinous in the future. So Frieza, if he did win, he potentially would become a lot stronger. And in turn, he would become a bigger threat in the future. And it would be a very hard struggle to be able to bring him down. That is something that would be very cool too. So there's two different paths that Toei could do if they did those things I would want. But like I said, they're probably going to go with the Goku thing. So yeah, I'm going to end it there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below how you felt about this week's episode of Dragon Ball Super. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? And if you enjoy my content, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you, uh, for some reason, are not getting notifications to my videos and you want to get notifications, make sure to click the bell icon next to the subscribe button down below. Love you guys. Happy holidays. Chibi out.